Welcome back everybody to another fantastic planning update with our illustrious town and country planner, Ms. Linda Wright of Planet Wright. Thank you for joining us again, Linda. And this time, thank you to our viewers who have put messages on our YouTube channel saying, guys, you've missed out an update for us. Please update us. What's going on? Have we missed out a new planning permission, Linda? I don't think so. Oh. Well, if I can just read out something that I got sent, which was off social media, it says, I have discovered one type of property that very, very few developers bother looking at. OK, maybe this is niche. What's niche. that, we ask? Yeah, maybe they think it's too difficult to convert. Or perhaps they're not aware of the new permitted development rights that the government has granted to convert these buildings without planning permission. Have we missed it, Linda? We must have. Clearly we have missed something. When, what, when, when was this? What, what last month? week. This is a social media really? post put out last week. That's why I'm saying to you, why have we missed it? Yeah, now, this is sounding accusatory now. Now, let, let me carry on reading. This post only appeared last week and it says, this permitted development right came into effect in the last few weeks. So it must be recent. In my view... So what does it say we can do on the permitted development rights, Andrew? It's the easiest conversion project out there. And there's no competition. It's almost non-existent. Oh, and it's... Yeah. It then goes on to say, Welcome to the little-known world of industrial conversions. Hang on. Taking Hang on. old light industrial buildings and converting them into residential apartments. Well, wasn't this the old B8s that ceased to exist? I, I, I'm confused. Linda, help, help me out here a little bit, please. <laughs> Perpetu in the state of the perpetually confused. Right. Um, number one, um, this is not, this has not come out within the last few weeks. So we've not missed anything. Don't, don't panic. There's nothing that we have not advised our lovely viewers about. There is, is nothing new. Um, so let's, let's, Let's set B8 aside because B8 is the class that is uh, warehousing and distribution. It's not really industrial per se. So let's. Okay. On, but under the hasn't B8 expired? No, no, no. But no, don't don't muck about with B8. Right. So let's set that on one side. Then we have a class B2 which tends to be your heavy industrial stuff. Steel foundries and stuff like that. Right, so so set that on one side there. Then we have the class B1. So I've, I've gone up the ladder from class B8 to class B2. There were lots of others in between when I was a child, um, but they've gone by the by. So we get to class B1. Now, class B1 is split into three. And class B1 has B1A, B1, I'm just going to move you down a bit. Class B1A, B1B, obviously, alphabetical, and class B1C. Now, these are all formally in these use classes. We're talking about the use classes order now, not the general permitted development order. We'll talk about that in a minute. Well, we did a video on the use classes order and on the permitted development order. So we've yes. got the two of those that the audience can refer to as well. Search for, for that so that the, if, if any of this that I'm saying is, is not sort of sinking in, then they can go back and have a look at those. So class B1A, the former class B1A, because the use classes order, as you'll find out if you, if you listen to our other video, has now changed. So the former class B1A was any offices in use 
other than class A2 offices, the former class A2 offices. So anything bigger than your accountants or your, your solicitor's offices. So it was tended to be things like call centres, stuff like that. Yeah. Class yeah. B1B is research and development of products or processes. So that could be an office type of environment, but more like a, a laboratory type of example. OK, so that's R&D. Then we have class b one C in the use uh, the former use classes order, which was for any industrial process. So this is where we get the industrial bit from any industrial process which can be carried out in a residential area without causing detriment to the amenity of that area. Okay. So that's very specific. So basically, it's it's fluffy industrial. It's like the type of stuff that doesn't create noxious fume, doesn't create noise. Um, so it's in an industrial process, very, very light, can be can, can carried out in a residential area without disturbing the disturbance to the neighbours. So that is where I think this has come from, although there has been nothing in the last few weeks. So that's that's clearly wrong. This was 31st of August, wasn't it? It was. I'm not going to I'm not going to sort of, you know, muck about with this. It, it, it's it has not come out in the last few weeks. Now, as we know, in 2020, September, as of September, uh, it came out before that, but it came into, into force in September. The new use classes order changed massively. And what we ended up with was a new class E. In new class E, we're lumped, that is a technical professional term, all of the uses such as class a1, A2, A3. Now, pubs and things weren't put in here, so you, you've just got to be a bit careful um, yeah. with what you look at. So A1, A2, A3. So shops, financial and professional offices, cafes and restaurants. Also into Class E came Class B1, A, B and C. All of it, all of Class B, which, as I've just explained, includes class B1C, the industrial processes in residential area. Now, what happened when, and, and we've got D1 and D2, classes D1 and D2 went into the new class E. New class E is called commercial business and service. But the big thing about class E that came afterwards, after the use classes order last year, as of, as you've quite rightly said, August last year, was that class E premises, all of them, can be converted to residential, subject to prior approval of the council. These things are always badged as permitted development rights, you know this is my bet noir. They are not permitted. You cannot just go ahead and do them. You need a prior approval notification and application to the council. And it is not a rubber stamp job. It's not a done deal. There is no presumption. Well, there's kind of a presumption that these things will be approved, but nobody's told the local planning authorities that. So, uh, and so also, as, yeah, sorry, carry on. As of August, Last year, Class E premises, which includes B1C workshop industrial stuff, can be converted using the new Class MA and submitting a prior approval application. Now, I well, we did a video a on Class MA, so we did. I'm just we looking did. at this message that somebody's put in and. Everything you've said, we told everybody about 12 months ago. Yeah. Do you think this person's only just... Clocked it. Yeah. <laughs> couldn't, couldn't possibly comment, Andrew, but this is not, you know, this is, this is smoke and mirrors. This is not new. 
We talked about this months and months ago. If you want to stay on the top of your game and you're not already, smash that subscribe button, hit the bell icon, and you will be one of the first to hear about it rather than reading it on social media from somebody who says it's come out in the last couple of weeks. So carry on, Linda. So that's what I think this is. Now, I I want to issue a note of caution because there there was a prior approval, a temporary permitted development right, I hate permitted development rights, a prior approval system, the hybrid, hybrid system, under class PA that granted the right to apply for the prior notifi- prior approval of the council under a prior approval application um, for industrial premises to be converted to residential. In the latest round this year of changes to these rights, this Class PA has expired. Now, it's still showing in the general permitted development order. Why is that? Well, it's still showing in that because if you got permission last year, uh, no, this year, actually, if you got permission, and I'm trying to think of what the date was, 1st of October, I think, if you got permission by then, then your consent lasts for three years. That is under class PA, converting industrial to residential. But now that we've got the new use class E, we can convert from workshops and light industrial using the new use GPDO use class MA into residential. It's not new. You know, we were warned about this in the middle of this year, about six months ago. Um, Yes, it might be that people have not started looking at industrial premises, light industrial premises. They might have thought, well, because class PA has gone, we can't do it anymore. But people must be very, very careful. If they're looking at buying a property uh, and it had has had consent to convert to residential under class PA, you have to be warned that you can't go back and renew that consent. Once it expires, you would have to submit a new application under the new class MA. And as we know, there are much, much more stringent requirements in the new use class, in the new class MA, such as size of uh, apartments, adequate levels of natural light, all sorts of, of other issues have been thrown in, which makes these prior approvals that much more difficult to obtain. Well, I'd also add that this Class PA was aimed at B8 properties rather than B1C properties. Well, it was it was aimed at a whole raft of things, not necessarily Class B8, because to be perfectly honest, uh, I've advised lots of clients on this and said, look, if you're going on an industrial estate and you're finding a humongous wrinkly tin shed, then, uh, you know, the likelihood is you're probably not going to get planning permission for that because it's just not going to work. Well, the other thing is, if you're doing something on an industrial estate, and this is not necessarily planning, what you might find is there's restrictive covenants over that property because the estate manager will put limitations on what you can do on his estate. Yeah, it is. It is. But it comes down to whether it's planning or whatever it is, as you and I know, it comes down to basic due diligence when you're looking at uh, these sites and don't get all hot and excited in an auction room and start bidding for things if you have not read the legal pack. That is that is just a basic. So uh, from that point of view, just do your due diligence, you know, a modicum of common sense. Um, and and look at properties very carefully because you can buy things that are never going to work. Well, I, I would add to that, Linda. I mean, it's also worth doing your due diligence. If you're seeing social media posts of people saying, um, in the last few weeks, the easiest conversion projects out there, little known strategy, come and find out more. Was do there a do, course? Was there a course being offered? 
I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I think you, you have to check out the facts and make sure you're not being sold a pup. And the one of the ways you can make sure you're not being sold a pup is to hire Linda. She's a fantastic planning consultant, does work for me. And not only that... He's a very picky client. <laughs> You're going to edit that bit out. <laughs> That's good that I'm a picky client. It means I have attention for detail. But I would also urge you, smash that subscribe button. Hit the bell icon to be warned when we first release the videos. And you'll be the first to know. But also hit the share button and tell your mates about it. Because we tell you it here first, we tell you it straight, and we don't mince our words, do we, Linda? No. Never been, never knowingly undersold. <laughs> or shouldn't say that. We'll have, we'll have John Lewis after us now. Well, there you go. We'll have to hashtag John Lewis today. On that note, give Linda a thumbs up and... Drop your comments below what you think of this strategy and should people be out there on social media whacking out posts trying to mislead you, the consumer, that there's strategies that may or may not really be there. And if you know anything about this strategy and want to share it, I'd be glad to hear it. For now, Linda, thank you very much. That was, um, I'm glad I didn't miss anything. So thank well, we've you. We've unraveled a little mystery, haven't we? We have indeed. We have indeed. So it's thank you from me, Andrew Roberts, and and it's thank you from him. Good night. Thank you. Good night. <laughs>